we can talk about three major types of map projections. And these types have to do with the kind of surface that the globe is projected onto and then potentially flattened out to become a flat surface for a um, Cartesian coordinate system. Of course, the easiest way to do this is just to start with a flat surface. That would be an example of an azimuthal map projection. So we project directly from the globe onto the flat surface. But there are two other surfaces that are commonly used. One is a cylinder and one is a cone. And if you think about it, we can project either onto a cylinder or a cone and then flatten those out. So here's an example of how we could flatten out a cylinder or a cone. We would put the map projection in the middle of that cylinder, project onto the cylinder, and once we have it projected onto the cylinder, cut along the dotted line and then flatten it out into a flat surface, which would be the map projection. In a similar manner on the right, we start out with a cone, put the globe underneath the cone, so, it's, so the cone is sitting on top of the globe, then we project the map from the globe onto the cone, cut along the dashed line once again, and then we have a flat developable surface, which was made from the projection surface, which was the cone. If we want to project a map onto a cylinder, we really have three choices of how to do this. One is that we could um, basically make it a cone whose I'm a cylinder who, um, whose axis is parallel to the axis of the Earth. So that in this case, the cylinder is oriented north-south and so is the Earth. And so the cylinder would touch the globe along that dark line there, which is the equator. We call that a normal cylindrical map projection. We could, however, orient the cylinder so it's horizontal. And in this case, it would touch along one of the lines of longitude on, and then the other line of longitude on the other side of the globe. And um, this is called a transverse cylindrical map projection. However, we could also put that at any angle in between latitude and longitude so that that line, so that the place where the globe touches the cylinder runs along any, any line that we want to. And we would call this an oblique map projection. Um, the reason we might want to use these different map projections is because the distortion is going to be minimized along those darker lines. So for example, the one on the left, the normal cylindrical map projection, if we had something we were mapping near the equator that was oriented east-west, we might want to use that one. If we had something that was long and oriented north-south, like the country of Chile, I mean, the country of um, of Chile in South America, we might want to use a transverse map projection in the middle. And if we had something that, that lined up but didn't quite line up along latitude or longitude, like the Aleutian Islands, we might want to use that oblique map projection shown on the right. The other type of thing we can do is um, use a cone instead of a cylinder. If we use a cone, the place that we're going to have the least distortion is where the cone touches the globe. And this is typically used at um, mid-latitudes. You can see where that standard parallel is there. That would be the one line where the, um, where the cone is touching the globe, and that would be a line of zero distortion. The central meridian is basically the middle of the map, and we can choose where that is as well. Once we project onto the cone, then once again we would flatten it out, and then we would have a curved map projection as is shown on the right-hand side there. Um, the lines of of longitude would sort of um, converge towards the towards the top of this map projection and the lines of latitude would be curved as um, as is indicated by that standard parallel there. Once again with this sort of map projection which is called a conic ta tangent map projection we only have one line along which there is zero distortion which is the standard parallel. However we can even do better than that. We can use a secant map projection where the cone cuts through the earth so that there are two lines where the cone exactly follows the outline of the globe and has zero distortion associated with it. So now we have two lines of standard parallel. These two lines of standard parallel are going to have no distortion associated with them. The area in between is going to be squished down onto the cone and the area um, outside of the two standard parallels is going to kind of be pulled or stretched out to, um, to, to be projected onto the cone. So that would be an example of a secant 
conic map projection, and um, now we've minimized distortion along two east-west running lines. And as you can imagine, this type of map projection is good for um, areas at mid-latitudes like the United States and Europe and Russia and um, places that are east-west oriented. If we look at um, what the Tissot and Indicatrix looks like in this sort of map projection, as we can imagine, the standard, the two lines are standard parallel on the map projection. That's where there's going to be zero distortion. And as we move further and further to the south, those um, circles get bigger and bigger as there's more and more distortion associated with them. So a conic map projection would not be good for mapping an equatorial area because there would just be too much distortion associated with it. But it's really good for the, um, the mid-latitude stuff like the United States and Europe and, and Russia and China. If we look specifically at the United States and a secant example here, here's what we would see. We would have two standard lines of parallel, one near the north of the United States and the other near the south of the United States. And along those two solid lines, those two lines of latitude that are solid and say standard parallel line of true scale, there would be no map distortion. That map distortion would increase between those two lines of parallel and it would also increase outside of those two lines of parallel but right along those two lines of parallel, no distortion. The azimuthal map projection basically just takes a, um, a flat plane, lays it on the globe, and then the globe is projected directly onto the flat plane. If the, um, if the flat plane is on the North Pole or the South Pole, we call that a polar azimuthal map projection, and that's what's typically seen with azimuthal map projections. But if we wanted to we could also have an azimuthal map projection at the equator, which would be an equatorial azimuthal map projection, or anywhere in between, which would be an oblique azimuthal map projection.